So when I say simple, I'm talking about the only real things you're going to need are some twine, masking tape, a bit of cardboard and some paint. So I'm going to show you today some activities that we do when we're just out on a nature walk with Oscar. Really simple things that you can just have in the back of your car or have in your pocket of your coat. And the kids really love doing it and makes it a bit more interesting for them. It encourages them to look closely at nature and participate in it and use it in different craft activities. So this first activity is perfect for the toddler who constantly stops and picks things up from the ground on their walk. So I think that's probably most toddlers at some point in their toddlerhood. So what we need for this is some masking tape wrapped around their wrist. You do this before you go out, sticky side sticking out. And then every time they find something that's interesting, you just rip a little bit off and adorn it onto their bracelet. So it's just a tiny bit of leaf, a tiny bit of twig. And then by the time they have finished their walk, they have beautiful adorned bracelets. Activity is a variation on the sticky bracelet and instead it uses an egg carton so you can just have an egg carton in the back of your car and if you're going out for a walk just bring it out with you and then encourage your children to look at the ground and find interesting things Oscar loves doing this especially on his bike as you can see and he kind of points things out for me to pick up for him and then you just pop each little find in a section of your egg carton it's really handy to obviously try to find a variety of different things because then you can take them home and use them for some craft activities that I'm going to show you later on. is a nature weave. For this you need the lid of a shoebox or a piece of card and just make some snips with some scissors about every 10 centimeters down the sides and then use your twine to wrap it around and then this creates a weaving board. So this is a great activity for again picking up things on your nature walk of you know sticks and bigger things that wouldn't stick to the sticky bracelet for example and if you have a slightly older child you can actually get them to do the weaving and this makes a really lovely display of such a variety of things you can find on your walk.
The next activity is leaf threading and all you need for this is a piece of twine, find a stick to use as your needle and crisscross a pair of sticks at the bottom so the leaves don't fall off. And then in your nature walk, go along and look at the ground looking for really interesting leaves. This is great for fine motor skills and also for language development as you talk about all the different colours and different shapes and sizes of the leaves. So when I came to US, I was very new to English as well as American English. I used to write words like There's no such thing as bad weather, just unsuitable clothing and I couldn't agree more. We try to get out every day regardless of what the Irish weather is doing and I think it's such an important lesson for Oscar to learn that weather doesn't have an impact on what we can do. We were kindly gifted our splash suit and wellies from Spotty Otter and they've given me a 15% off code for you guys to use if you'd also like to get your hand on one of these Forest Leader insulated splash suits using the code PLAY15. I'll put all the details in the description box below but they are are fantastic and allow us to get out every day. If you're wondering what on earth you're going to do with all those forest treasures you have collected in your egg carton, then this is your answer, making natural paintbrushes. So all you need to do is again, using your trusty twine is collect a series of different things from your forest walk and then have some sticks use your twine to wrap it around your sticks and there you have a selection of natural paint brushes then you just provide them with some natural colored paints and if you don't have an easel like i don't yet you can just put big paper over your fridge i find this the best way for toddlers to paint is standing up and doing it vertically because when they sit down they end up getting covered in it and it just ends up being a big big mess so i just wrap our fridge in paper and then allow oscar to use all the things we found on our nature walk to paint with and this is a fantastic idea to allow creativity but also to allow them to explore those things that they found in nature and to examine them more the prints they make the leaf shape and it's just really really fun I always get asked lots of questions about our art supplies so in the description box below this video I have popped lots of links for all of the things that we use including Oscar's cover up, the oil cloth he's standing on, the paints we use, it's all linked in the description box below. The final activity is for the braver among you and it is a colour mixing activity which uses their hands. Collect some leaves of different colours and give them some paints and encourage them to recreate the colours of the leaves using their hands by mixing all the paint together. They can also use the leaves to create imprints. Oscar really loves this and it creates the most wonderful patterns. I actually then cut out the patterns and use them on cards, which I send to the grandparents or I frame and put in his playroom. They're just really gorgeous modern art pieces. And once you actually put them in a frame or on a card, you just can see the beauty in your child's artwork. And that's it. I really hope you'll give some of these activities a try and I will see you again next week. Bye guys. Hello and welcome everyone. A very warm welcome to everybody on this session on learning from nature. I think uh, everybody understood that from the video that we played as you were waiting for the resource and all the other members to join into the session. We have a full house again, another full house today. Our participants have crossed, crossed about 150 at the moment and we're looking for some more. So uh, nature-based learning and learning from environment is one of the most beautiful things. I'm going to put everybody on mute for the moment.
All right. So nature-based environment or learning from nature and learning from the environment uh, is the most beautiful and a natural way of learning for children. And that is how, that is what we will learn today with Dr. Nina Gulabini, who is a trainer, coach, entrepreneur, educationist, and has, is a founder of Anubhav Learning Center, an early childhood care education and care center, where thousands of children were nurtured, empowered to become humanistic, happy individuals. So humanistic also, I believe, comes from nature. When you learn from your environment, when you learn from your nature, it really adds in a lot of uh, uh, humanness into you and gets away, uh, takes you away from all the negative vibrations, negative spirits and, you know, all that competitive things and other things and puts all the positive vibrations, positive thoughts and a positive personality into your being. So with this, uh, Nina ma'am, over to you. I'll just make you the co-host, Nina ma'am, so you can unmute. And uh, also ma'am, if you want me to share the screen up front or do you want to try it once? You can unmute yourself ma'am. Thank you, Imani, and good afternoon. It's so wonderful. We've crossed 200 today. Yes. We all need to clap and give a nice pat on our shoulder. Saturday afternoon, post lunch, I thought uh, in this summer, people would be wanting to sleep. Okay, but uh, we are all here. Uh, I hope I will do justice to the topic. And uh, thank you, Himani, for uh, setting the stage. So very beautiful. Uh, and you know what it brings me to the point? Why should we only be looking at and looking for such learning from overseas videos? Why can't we create our own? So my first request before even I start the session is that as we go back and get back into our spaces, we must ensure that we create our own such wonderful stories of learning from our environment. And uh, I will take it over from here. Uh, can we, uh, would you like to share or I can share, but I thought then uh, I can um, kind of get going with the thing. Yes, ma'am, just give me a second. I'll begin the screen share. So, uh, while Himani sets up the presentation, I just have one very quick question uh, for all of you. When we use the word environment, right? We are all learning from our environment. What are the two, three words that come to your mind? You just put it on the chat box, put it on your notebook, wherever. Please put it on your chat box. Uh, Ma'am, I've put everybody on mute. Sure. Because yeah, yeah. Let's not... put it on the chat box. Okay, so it goes surroundings. Hey, good afternoon, Adya. <laughs> Nature. Okay. Mm -hmm. Surroundings. Wonderful. It's fantastic. So I think let's get started. Uh, so our workplace and home. Very good. Thank you very much for adding that. Okay, so uh, today we are going to be talking learning from environment using natural resources, right? So there would be three aspects to my uh, talk and my presentation today. Now, first is that what is it that when we say environment, we must be very clear. And uh, natural resources is just part of that environment, right? It's not the complete environment. So let us understand um, what is it that we are uh, considering in the environment. We go ahead. Uh, we can move. Yes. Uh, uh, now, when I say environment, uh, before we move on to that, is it the second slide? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, how do we learn? I mean, I think this we had done in Ruma's uh, uh, session, uh, or all of you who would have attended her session, that we basically learn when we are feeling, we are seeing, we are listening, and we are engaging. Right? So, this is how children learn too. Uh, next one. So if we have to learn this, why I'm just sharing this is just a quick repetition so that when we move on to, we must understand that these are the ways that children learn too. And we all learn that way. Now, when we say environment, now there is one environment which is existing there, right? Today, if I start, I have a table, I have a laptop, I am in a room, we have a sofa, we have a 
device, etc., etc. So this is also part of my environment. So this is something which is already there. I mean, it's today given to me. Right? Second is that I create an environment. So usually when we talk of environment, let's say all of you are into a school space. So you are into an environment which is a building. Right? So there is some outdoor and there is an indoor. So what is it that in the indoor we have? One is the natural resources that we bring inside. We have a lot of waste materials which we use to learn. We have a lot of spaces from where we can learn. And we, of course, have the manufacturing teaching learning aid. And most of us feel that, you know, if I'm sure of the learning aid, the school is not providing me enough, how will I go ahead with it? Uh, well, uh, today's topic and today's uh, dialogue will help you understand that even if you have nothing at hand, whatever little existing you have, we can do a lot. Now, when we talk of the indoors today, we are going to be focusing only on the two aspects as the natural resources, which we bring into the classroom. And second is the uh, spaces. Okay, so when I say spaces, uh, you, we are all talking right now in the context of the school. So in the context of the institution, we have classrooms, we have different spaces within the school building. Uh, um, so all those spaces actually are a uh, lot of source of learning. And when we talk of outdoors, we will have natural resources and we have a lot of play equipment that, uh, and the playgrounds. So we are today going to be focusing only on the natural resources when we look at outdoors. So next one. Yeah. Now, what are the benefits that we have when we talk of learning from our environment uh, for children? Uh, now, if I look at the benefit, so the first is that it's a holistic development. Really, you know, there's a lot of debate and discussion that happen that, you know, all teaching learning can happen only in a classroom setup. Yes, it can. But then from our environment, when we are teaching, even if we don't have that teaching learning resources, a lot of human, uh, holistic development happens. And we all understand about holistic development, uh, five aspects on the hand. I'm not going to repeat that. Now, what are the things that um, uh, add benefit children? So first is that they develop a lot of observation. They become very observant. Have you heard of individuals and even as adults, he, I'm going somewhere and I don't know what's around me. Second is I become aware because when I learn to observe, I become aware. Third is the children also learn to connect. Now, when they are feeling, touching, working with certain resources, with material, they learn to connect with those resources. They develop respect and value. As uh, Himani just said, the humanistic element of uh, learning. Then they become mindful that, you know, when you're observing all the time, you're looking up, down, left, right, center, uh, you become very mindful of your environment. Interrelatedness, they understand that every, uh, all forms of life, human life, plant life, animal life, all nature elements, they are interrelated. So if you talk of soil, uh, my soil is not good, my health is not good. Next, they also learn about association. So anything, the concept that you're teaching them in the classroom, they can associate it with their environment. So there's a lot of association that happens. It allows them to explore. It allows them to expand their horizon. You know, They're not learning from those limited games, toys, and puzzles, but it's expanding their uh, horizon. Very important element uh, for and a benefit for children is the sustainability behavior. You know, when we are using natural resources and learning from our environment, we are connecting with our environment, children also learn to respect value and they learn to sustain that, whether it's water, soil, plants, twigs, branches, trees, or even any other resource. It could be the indoor spaces. You know, they would learn to sustain those things. You know, one of the things that we never ever look at uh, and uh, work with our children is how do we sustain them? Even if it's a table or a chair in our environment. So we don't have respect for that. And so we don't care. When we start respecting, we start caring, automatically we move on to the next element of sustaining our resource. And last is, but not the least, is safe. So when we are learning from things which are already there in the environment, uh, it's always a very safe learn. Next, please. Now, what are the benefits of learning from an environment? Uh, no, go back, go back, go back. Go back. 
I think we missed one. Yeah, for the educators. Now, uh, then we are focusing a lot on our environment, both indoor, outdoor, natural resources, and other resources. Um, there is an ease of engagement. You know, like we just saw this video, all those who were watching this video. Did you, was there any um, hustle bustle? Was it pushing? Was a stress on the person, whether a mother or an educator? You, there is an ease of engagement with children and you allow children to engage with their resources that are there. Now, first is that the resources are easily and freely available, and these can be replenished. So when we are talking of resources from within our environment, which are already there, we don't have to really stress ourselves that, oh, I have already spent so much on today's activity. Um, you can get as much and you can keep replenishing it. Second, it enables uh, facilitators to be innovative and creative. You know, we just saw some of the innovation and the creativity. Uh, Third, that it reinforces the philosophy that children learn from everything, right? So let us not think that if I don't have a crayon, I don't have a pencil, I don't have a paper, I don't have the book, my children cannot learn. But this is a very conventional thought process. So a lot of educators who come with that mindset have a lot of difficulty moving on to this progressive way of uh, educating, a holistic way of educating where we give a lot of emphasis to our environment and to our natural resources. Last but not the least, it's a very low cost teaching curve right? because we don't have to spend on creating these resources or getting these resources up. Yeah, next one, please. Himani, next one, please. Yeah. Uh, so, what is the indoor environment? So, I'm going to, I said that there is an indoor environment, there's an outdoor environment. There is an environment which is already there and there's something that we create, right? So when you make those posters, charts, and the decorations on the walls, uh, all the educators are actually creating that environment, right? But let's see what is already there. So there are functional spaces in any place, whether it's home or it is a uh, school. So these are, most of these are rooms. I'm not going to elaborate on that. These are just the functional spaces. At home, if you look at, it's a kitchen, it's a washroom, it's a living room, it's a bedroom, it's a bathroom, and terrace, balcony, garden, whatever. So these are some of the functional spaces. In the school, it would be the classroom, the reception, um, the entrance, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the second is the natural resources that we bring from outside. You know? Then the third is the natural resources that we pick up from the now, these are some of the resources which are extremely essential and they're very easy and very engaging and very safe and very simple to use, um, which where we have flower, flower, food colors, fruits, vegetables, cereals, grains, etc. And then last is the waste material. So uh, we're going to focus a little bit on the functional spaces because all children are in the classroom. And we are also thinking the classroom may have maximum teaching. So let's move to the next one. So let's first see today, because we're talking of the foundational years. So today, the, the new batch of students have come, right? If we are... Uh, a lot of kids come in July or they just come in April, but they're still kind of in a settling phase. Now, so... What is a simple activity that we can do? Uh, we straight take, bring them to the classrooms or maybe they go to a play area as and when they did uh, or as per their timetable. So one of the key things that we worked at our, in our center and which worked wonders is a guided walk from the school gate to the classroom. Right? Now, this is their environment and this is going to be their everyday environment for good 14, 15 years. So let's start with the school gate. So this, we at the school gate, we can talk about it. All the concepts you can think of, you can mention what kind of a school gate, the color, how big it is. Uh, can you see through the school gate? How does it open? Who is manning the school gate? Then the school board, the logo of the school, right? Every child associates themselves with the school through the school logo, through the school gate, through the building. Then pathways and the walkways. Now, as you take the child, you know, uh, bring the group of kids inside from the gate, uh, there would be a pathway, there would be a walkway. Um, let's keep talking to them, you know, what is it that they see on the right, what is it on the right, left, how is the, what, what kind of a pathway is it, is it concrete, is it just with some red soil, or is it a paved one. So what kind of a path? You know, let's, the whole idea is that they connect, they observe everything that they are uh, uh, seeing. 
Then we look at the school building from outside. You know, how does the school building look? What the color of the school building, uh, etc. Then people managing different spaces. If there is a garden outside, there's a reception, there's a washroom, there's the gate. Who are these people? Let's connect with those people in different spaces because they form my environment. Then as we move up, you know, we look at the reception, who handles the reception, why is there a reception? Um, then how many classes do we see as we move up? Is my class on the ground floor, first floor? Is it, uh, do I have to climb steps? Do I turn left? Do I turn right? So what are we teaching? We are actually giving them the spatial learning. We are learning the directions. So a lot of learning happens with this one simple guided tour, right? So let's uh, try and do this uh, as we get back uh, to school in July. I'm sure your children are going to love it. Okay? And they'll never, ever forget their school. Uh, okay, move to the next one, please. Now let's look at, initially, I'm going to look at some of the indoor spaces, right? So um, I hope you all can see the complete screen and if this side panel is not uh, blocking you. Just give a thumbs up so we know you can. Okay. If you can see the screen. You can see the full screen of the presentation. Just okay. give a thumbs up. Ma'am, yes, we've got a lot of thumbs up, ma'am, 13. Oh, 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 I'm going to go ahead. Now, uh, let's look at the, every room, whether at home or in the classroom, is going to have a fan. Now, I've picked up some of these very simple things. And these are all um, illustrative, right? It's not a comprehensive list that I have because I cannot possibly cover so much in this. I've tried to cover a bit of it just to give you uh, a go ahead and get, get started with a bit different kind of a thinking and a different kind of a learning. So we all have a fan in the room. And even when a baby is born, the first thing that they be asked them is, light kaha hai, pankha kaha hai. Remember? So they all associate with the fan. But wo wahan pe learning shuru hui aur wahi pe ho. So let's see what all can children learn from the fan. What all can we do? So uh, what we used to do was we would make, uh, you know, when kids would be a little tired, they've had an outdoor activity, we'd bring them in. They lay down on the floor, uh, make space for them, and we would ask them to just look up and observe the ceiling. And what do they see? They see a ceiling. They may be one, two, three, whatever number of fans, right? So they can count the number of fans in the classroom. They can look and associate the shapes. Now, if you look at the fan, the there are different parts of the fan. There is a cone right at the top. Then there is a long uh, cylindrical thing. Then you have an, another cone. And then there is a circle at the base. And then you have the rectangle. Now, well, older fans used to be just three wings. Newer fans have even four, five, five, six, six wings. So uh, that's immaterial. So the number of the wings. Then we have a regulator. You know, uh, there are digits on the regulator. So we don't have to always make them write. You don't have to always write on the walls the numbers and all. There's so much already there in the environment. We don't need to redo it. And then the, these are some of the life skills which we're building with them and developing when we are helping them learn from what is there in their environment. The concept of high and low, easy. Motion and speed, you put the regulator on one, then you put the regulator on five. How the speed moves. And then are the wings visible? So the concept of visible, invisible, light, heavy. Now you place some paper or some lighter things on the floor and how they will fly. Kids' clothes would fly off. The frocks would fly off. You know? And then how is this fan running? What is the source? So there is electricity, you know, which we don't see, but it comes through wired. So there's a lot of conversation that can happen during that very nice, relaxing time. So regulating the speed, just shared. So what is fast, we can run slow, we can run fast. Same is with the fan. And then we can help children to, they're a little older and they can do like four years and all. They can do freehand drawing or you can do dot, dot, dot. They can do drawing. Uh, we do a fan dance, right? They can be very interesting fan dance. You can have the small hand fan dance. Children can pull out their arms out and they can, you know, go in circle and create their own uh, movements. Uh, language. There's a lot of vocabulary and language around uh, the simple and thing from your environment that's a fan. Now, um, so letter association, the phonics, the vocabulary, then there are different kinds of fans. You know, we could also talk to them about um, uh, is it just the ceiling fan? How many of us would actually, we only know fan. 
But do we know this is a ceiling fan? Because it's fixed to the ceiling. It's a fixed fan. But there are other kinds of fan. Ask them if they have seen any other kinds of fan. There could be a lot of discussion around it. Sustainability, right? Energy saving. We all keep telling them. But as an educator or as a caregiver, we don't do that. So we have to be a role model, right? In the uh, entire exercise. So are we all the time? Because children are not observing us. Is it that if each time we move out of the classroom or any space, we make sure that we turn off the fan at the right side. Right? So that is the sustainability element, which is coming and getting imbibed into them right from their early years. Then cleanliness. Uh, we do talk about, we take bath every day, we brush every day. So fan also has to be cleaned regularly. Can we leave the fan dirty? I've seen beautiful houses with dirty fans, right? Beautiful schools with dirty fans. So let's bring in this concept of cleanliness also. In the fan. And then we also um, uh, talk to them, how do we clean the fan? Who will clean the fan? We need to, we need a ladder, we need to go up, we have to be very safe, somebody has to hold a ladder. We could even do it sometimes in front of children. And who fixes the fan? You know, the electrician. So the community helpers, uh, the support system comes into play. Next one. Another thing that there in every space is the wall. Okay, so let's see what all can be learned from the wall. Now, what children can do it, you can just allow children to walk around the room, whichever room, whichever space it is, and let them go around the wall. If they can feel the wall, they can touch the wall, they can walk along the wall, and let them figure it out. How does this wall feel? Is it rough? Is it smooth? Uh, is it tiled? Is it just the painted wall, what kind of a color on the wall, um, is the wall very high, you look up and you look down, then uh, you count how many walls in a room, and you can even look at the corners, you know, like if any corner is free, children can be made to stand in the corner and let them see how they feel, you know, and we introduce them to the concept of angles, uh, and that is where the walls meet. And then there are a lot of wall exercises, you know, we, it's very simple ones uh, to break the monotony, we could do couple of times of all exercises because all the time the weather doesn't allow you to be outdoors. Kids can write the uh, letter W if they're not into the writing you can write put it all over the walls the day you're trying to talk about the walls. Then we have the concept of the bottom of the wall what is it that the bottom of the wall is the floor top of the wall is the ceiling right then we could do a lot of rhyming words, mall, tall, wall, hall, etc., etc. We could create a little rhyme, right, sitting there as we are talking to them. Then we also observe what all is there are placed on the wall. Right? Uh, not all this we are doing to ensure the first point, and that is helping them to observe. We are they all are good observers. But now we are facilitating them. We are not telling them, okay, uspe ghadi lagi hai, uspe painting lagi hai, uspe chart laga hai. No, let them. And then just see, then let them close their eyes, let them reflect, and then they memorize, okay, what is it that they saw on the wall? And once we do it as an everyday thing, children will get used to the thing of always looking around and being very mindful and watchful. Okay, then uh, what are all other things that they do? And then who makes the wall? Somebody made this wall for us. So again, we bring in the concept of amazing. Uh, if there is any construction going uh, around, you can ask children, so much of construction happening everywhere. See how the mason is putting brick by brick and creating the wall. Okay, next one, please. Doors and windows. Any room without doors and windows? I don't think there. Right. So let's see what all we can do from doors and windows. I don't need to again repeat. A lot of things would be repetitive. All I'm trying to say is every aspect of all the five developmental domains can be covered through your uh, different things that they are in the environment. You can count the number of doors and windows in a room, count the number of uh, and shapes of the door. You know, we have already done. Is it a square? Is it a rectangle with oval? What kind of, let them just feel, let them feel, put their hands all over and then let them associate, let them see. What is it made up of, you know? So you get a sense of the different materials. You know, it could be wood, it could be metal, there could be glass on it. And the concepts of hard and soft, so you feel the wall, it could be push, pull, open, close, sideways, a lot of windows, you know, the French windows, they open sideways, the sliding windows. So are they fixed windows? 
uh, the fix how the door is fixed to the wall, how the windows are fixed onto the wall. There is a frame which holds them. Then uh, is it a single door? Is it a double door? We, you can talk to them even at home. They may have a double door at the entrance. And some windows may be just single glass pane or some could be double door. Some may be moving in and out. You know, you open in and open out. Did that kind of a system. So let them observe. There's so much that they can learn. Then the function. Why do we need a door? Enter exit. Why do we need a window? Yes, we can talk about that. What are the parts of a door or a window? The handle, the hinges, the bolt. I've seen many people, you know, bari bari bachche hai, jo, bolo, they cannot um, uh, many over different kind of handle because somewhere it's a rotary, somewhere it's the one is up and down. So just the small things that are already there. These are all fine motor skills. Fine motor skills are of color paint. Se to nahi hota hai na. Window khologe, door khologe, usme bhi to fine motor skill ho hai. Then uh, there is a fly screen, you know, the mesh that we have. So some windows have that. Why do we need a fly screen? Then the we can children can draw their doors and windows. They can imaginary create a room, and they all do that. You know, when we tell them, all children. I've yet to come across a child in my thirty years who has not drawn a house and without a door or a window. That's how important the doors and the windows are. Then uh, safety and cleanliness. So how we have to be safe. You know, we usually you've seen that the accidents in schools happen when children kisi ka haath aata hai, that when become the big issue, right? So if in as we are talking to them about doors and windows, we also tell them that we have to be careful. Never keep our hands on the edge of the door, edge of the window, and somebody is closing. We keep our, at a little distance. How do we clean them? We could do a life skill activity of dusting the doors and windows with children and uh, wiping the doors and windows. Okay? Which, which has a glass. The We have table and chairs. There's no classroom without the table and chairs. So again, a lot of things we can learn from the tables and chairs also. The shapes, the colors, the parts, um, how many legs a table has, how many legs a chair has, concept of big and small. There will be a teacher's chair maybe or some other chairs in different spaces. So which are the chairs which are big, which are the ones small, What what is it made up of? What is the function of the table and chair? What all do we do when we sit on the table and chair? Cleaning, wiping, children can do it. You know, they will have learned the dignity of labor. They learn to respect people who do it. Then we stack the tables, we stack the chairs. So sometimes the furniture can stack the furniture. So we help the children to do that. Then the letter association with the table and the chair. How do we say? We could do T, 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 T in that day. Then taking care of our furniture, you know, we don't scratch, we don't sit on it. And who makes it? The carpenter. So again, the concept of the uh, helpers come. Okay, the next one, please. Ma'am, if I may add here. So we've been learning with the uh, Ruma ma'am and with Smriti ma'am that now the NCF focuses a lot on you know, this holistic development <clears throat> in the five areas which is the physical physical development, the cognitive development, social and emotional. And teachers, I'm sure you were able to connect with all the slides that uh, Nina Ma'am just said. This is how a holistic development is happening. And Ma'am's emphasizing it also again and again. I just wanted to remind you that we've done this before in the previous sessions. And we've always struggled. I know teachers also struggle. We are listening to it, it's good. That yes, we development to do everything. But how so you have to come out of the books. And these very basic activities ma'am is sharing, they become a part of, like they help you develop all those aspects. Sare wo panch kosh vikas jo humne last time <laughs> itne elaborately kiye the. So how many of you agree with me? Let me get some thumbs up. And how many of you feel they are easy? Everything ma'am's telling you is easy. Okay, I've got one response. And I've got about a couple of them. Yes. And do you think you really need to plan too much? All these are there in your environment. You can do addition, subtraction with your chair. Easy. They're all easy. Not at all. No planning. Yes, yes, yes. No planning. And the easy, you know, you just like, it's like making your classroom coming lively. Yes. Everything around you is a uh, teaching aid. Exactly. Everything. You name a thing, it's a teaching aid. And ma'am's beautifully given you ideas and some more to come. Perfect. 
a lot of idea, a lot of yeses, prepositions, prepositions also. Yes, that's so true. That's so true. You can teach prepositions. Easy to interact. And children get to move around physical movement. Thank you. Thank you so much. For once, I had a feeling everybody, are you even there? I could see none of the cameras on. So I was wondering, I said, are you there? But now I see everybody is so actively engaged. Probably that is why the silence. Perfect. Thank you so much. Neena, I'm over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Himani, for this beautiful short break and getting a quick feedback from everybody. So we move on to the next one. See, my idea is to just throw a few things at you, right? Uh, yeah. So uh, look at this. What are these kids doing? Now, this is the center that I had founded and this is what we would help children. Each child would pick up their chair and they wouldn't want to go out and they create a train because the weather is very nice. So this is how they can, you see the expressions on each child, they created something and they're sitting and they're now wanting to move this train. But one kid wants to keep the chair towards her friend. She doesn't want to move. Right, so you see very interesting things happen when children create their own things using the things which are already in the environment. So we have to only first throw it out of the mind and the, this intelligent box brain that we need a lot of resources for a good learning. No, what is there in the environment is enough, is enough. Right. Okay. Move. Be next to the next one. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what are the natural resources? So these are some of the examples. There's something that I just picked up a few days ago. <laughs> I didn't want to use all old pictures. So next one, please. And I think in the video, all those who saw the video, you saw pretty much the similar things. You know, so this is just a quick listing. I would have, because of the paucity of time, I'm not asking you. So this is just a very quick listing that I've done. What are the kind of beyond? What we are going to be doing is we're going to be dwelling on each of these separately, right? Okay, now a um, lot of this you can, as I said, bring to the classroom, make it an indoor learning. A lot of it, you have to actually make it happen that you take children outside, right? So in your learning, once today you have understood and I'm going to reiterate it time and again, that a lot of learning happens when children are outdoors, right? But many a time it is not possible. So no problem, bring the outdoors inside. But that does not mean that outdoors should be neglected or compromised. Okay, so the next one. Nina, one more interruption. I'm so sorry. Yeah. You can take your time and think about it. A okay. teacher ne actually ye sab kuch use kiya tha in his or her class and uh, mm, encouraged creativity. So <laughs> if you can remember, you can put it in the chat box. You <laughs> <laughs> just uh, answered. Yes, so Tare we need to Zameen. actually create Tare Zameen Par. Huh? <laughs> okay, next one, please. Good, good, good. Okay, so uh, when we bring natural resources indoors, now what is this natural resources doing? You know, now we know what are the different kinds. And you can add to this list because in different areas, you will have a lot of other different things. So uh, please keep your eyes and ears open. So now what are these natural resources are basically to use for loose part play. Now these are loose items, right? So th these are the loose part play. And what is the loose part play is not open-ended and it offers a lot of learning opportunity for children. So children can create anything that they want to. I'll show you some of the pictures that our kids have done. Uh, so there is a lot of creative thinking and inventiveness around it because that pattern never existed before. That is something that they created. It was very original. It had it has to be patented. So that design and that pattern. There's a lot of flexibility in using these things. Moving, shifting. You can take anything, anywhere. Then it encourages a sense of wonder. You know, sometimes when children see, wow, look at this leaf. Kind of a leaf it is. It has lines, bam. It has white, white patterns on it. It's so beautiful. It reminds me of the animal. Which animal? Let's have, have it in the box. Let's have it in the chat box quickly, quickly. Which animals have stripes? We always ask children, no? Animal zebra. 
Everybody's answered, ma'am. Yeah, frog everybody also. When somebody says the... frog, yes, absolutely. So see how you're learning everything. Just one. Okay. Tiger. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Wow. So zebra and tiger are the striped animals. So you also have it on the, the same pattern on your leaves as well. So it in sense of wonder. Oh my God! It's on the leaf, man. So I got. And today I'm also wearing something which is has stripes on it, but I'm wearing flowers. Allow them to manipulate the materials freely. No, so they can pick up something from here, shift, move, turn, anything. Now, what are the benefits of natural resources as loose bath materials? These can be moved, they can be combined, be sorted, they can be lined up, they can be spread out, and they can be designed in any which way that they, so everything that they create is absolutely original not from pin and dress and not from google designs right so that's the originality factor okay we move to the next one yeah uh yeah does it yeah so i just want to again as himani had just uh, given us a short break and help us to go back to now anything and everything that we do educators we are never going to leave our focus so these will remain in our focus and that is the five domains of development right so these only make the development of the whole child that we call so anything that any any resource from your environment you pick up all you have to do is it's very simple this is the trick of the tree all you have to do is keep this diagram at the back of your mind and say okay is me social emotional kya ho sakta hai physical and motor development kya ho sakta hai which will both gross motor skills now can you do um, an activity with this uh, uh, which is a gross motor skill activity you can do a relay race you can do a race with the different kinds of leaves and i have given you this leaf and you have to match it with the leaf that's there at the finish line right so create as much as you can we created this for with every concept that we did cognitive development we've already spoken about it creative arts the lot the paints the, that we will do the uh, designs that they will form it's all a part of creativity right then the language development and the early literacy how much vocabulary they will learn humne sirf unko bola hai table humne bola chair but jab humne sare activities kiye so can you see the quantum of vocabulary that they going to gain as part of so simple formula keep this hand handy at the back of your mind pick up any resource my resource today is my glass the resource today is maybe this i was wiping my um spectacles so i have this so what is it that i can do i have i use this to create a learning now when your mind starts to operate in that way you will see that you will it's it's like a pandora box of ideas okay the next one Okay, so these are now it's going to be very lot of fun, huh? So I have only pictures and pictures and pictures, no reading. So uh, uh, this is what we did, you know, like they were showing there. Also, you can take a little bit of rope. You can even take those thin uh, sticks, you know, something like this kind of a stick, and it can just uh, uh, you can thread it through the. You can make a hole into the. Uh, see something like this, okay? So uh, and you can stack. you can put as many leaves as you can onto the simple little stick do you need anything no it's safe yes if it goes waste no problem okay so threading with the leaves pattern with the leaves and look at the kind of pattern that you can create with the leaves and look at the different variety of leaves that are there and they would have never ever observed unless and until you now your job as an educator is only to facilitate them next okay next one please so activities with the leaves so what are the kind of activities you can do sorting leaves big and small matching leaves of the same type okay one more thing before i forget that whenever you're getting the natural resources indoors please get them in plenty children don't need to fight over it puzzle to 600 rupees ki aati hai samajh sakte hain resources crunch hai you can't give a similar puzzle to everybody but similar leaf you can na baba so please <laughs> if you have 15 children bring 20 uh then you can match the leaves you can do leaf printing so now there is printing with the leaf we just saw on the video it's very easy i'm sure a lot of you would be doing just they put the color onto it and tap it go then gives you a nice uh, stamping you could also actually print you know the dry leaves you can write on it with a 
marker or you can write it with the brush or something. Um, sometimes not on the glossy leaves, but the matte finished leaves you can do. Yeah. Uh, leaf row or something, somebody said garland. Yes, of course, we will do garland. Then leaf tracing, you know what we do? We put the leaf, put the paper, and then we run the crayon on it. Remember, we used to do coin tracing when we were kids. We'd keep the paper on top of the coin and then we'll run our pencil over it. The same way you can do leaf tracing. Then uh, different shapes of the leaves, colors of the leaves. Now, you see, these are all leaves and not flowers, the pink leaves. Have you ever seen the pink leaves? I pulled them from my garden. So these are the beautiful pink leaves that they are making a peak of. Yeah, you can make anything. Uh, size of the leaves, creating patterns. Then what is the weight of the leaves? Are they light? Are they Are heavy? Uh, put them in water, a small tub. Do they float? Do they sink? Um, what the letter? Count leaves, stack leaves. Then the concept of fresh and dry leaf. You know, you can ask them to pick up some leaves, dry leaves which have fallen off. We can make a little cute story around that. You know, this leaf is so fresh because it's got a lot of water from the plant. Now the leaf is fallen. There's no water. When I'm not drinking water, my body goes dry. So that's why we need to drink lots of water. So trees need, they also, plants also, leaves also need. And the leaf is dry, what will happen? It will curl. So let them feel the fresh leaf and the dry leaf. Then the leaf plate. I know, I remember we used to bring uh, banana leaves uh, sometimes to the class and uh, children would all eat on that. So on a particular day, once a month, we would get and the children loved it. They would, nobody would ever miss the center, uh, the school or the daycare, the day there were banana leaves coming to the center because it used to be so much of fun eating on the banana leaves and rolling it up and then putting it into the backyard, uh, not throwing it in the bin. So they all learned it. And if we eat on the leaves, we save water, to wash and we also save detergent and uh, we don't need any labor to wash the um, plates. So sometimes we need to do that. And then the feel the leaf. Each leaf is going to be different. So if you had touched this leaf, it is, it's little, um, so you have to be very careful when you pick up that it should not be thorny, it should not be too rough to hurt kids. So some leaves would be very, very soft and some leaves would be a little hard and matte finish, right? So <clears throat> we need to feel the leaves. When you, I feel it, when I hold it, how do I feel? I feel like loving it. I connect with it, right? Then I feel like taking care of it. Okay, so that's the whole idea. So heart has to be there. Mind to chal rai cognitive mein, but social emotional mein heart ka kaam. So jaise hum friends banate hai, Inko be friend. They are my very good friends. Next one, darling. Okay. Now, we let, let's move to some other. There are also edible leaves. So, we can pick up tulsi leaves. We can pick up mint leaves. And you can think of anything that you want. Now, life skills are 21st century skills. अरे भाई सिंपल चीजें तो आती नहीं है घर में झगड़े हो रहे हैं कोई चटनी नहीं बनाना चाहता बाहर से ऑर्डर कर लो फिर पेट खराब हो रहे अरे बच्चों के साथ मिलके काम करते हैं ना सो व्हाट वी यूज्ड टू डू वी यूज्ड टू से ओके हियर इज द मिंट बंच सो व्हाट आर वी गोइंग टू डू देयर इज द रूट ऑफ द सो यू शो देम द एंटायर मिंट बंच सो देयर इज द रूट एंड देयर इज अ स्टेम एंड देयर आर स्मॉल लीव्स एंड वी नीड टू वॉश द लीव्स एंड वी कैन मेक मिंट वाटर स्मेल द मिंट and let's pluck each leaf. So all the children would sit and they would count them. Ma'am, I did 10 leaves. Ma'am, I did 15 leaves. And our mint chutney raw material is ready. They have also washed it for us. All we need to do is just churn it in the grinder. So guys, do a lot of it. Aapko ghar mein chutney banana hai na? Mint leaves lia ho class mein ek din. Itna learning hoga ho, ghar ja ke chutney banana. Hmm? So, <laughs> uh, uh, and it, I'm telling you, children are going to love it. And they'll keep on smelling. And some will say, ma'am, I don't like this smell. I don't, I hate mint. Say, okay, no problem. You don't like it. Go wash your hands. But you will, at least they know what a mint is, how it smells. You can also allow them to grow. So sometimes we used to take one, take, take a pot and plant one of the, because we know mint is a runner. It will grow from the stem. Okay. All right. The next one. And these are, by the way, all from my school. 
all these pictures. So what takes me time is pulling out pictures from an archive of like 3,000, 4,000 pictures. Okay, so methi leaves. So this is the same thing we do with methi. We don't eat, want to eat methi because who has the time? If I don't have a helper at home, who will do this? See, there goes Imani's head turning. I'm sure everybody's head would be turning from left to right. This is the most painful thing to do. Most painful thing. So, don't buy it, man. It's like a vegetable. But if you have a child at home, put it in your house. And if you have put it in your house, they will always do it. Because their connection has become. We will do TV and watch TV. How would the mothers and the grannies do? They would do multiple things, right? But we've stopped doing it. We find it boring and monotonous. But let's bring life to this world. So, uh, uh, again, plucking, looking at the part, feeling, every leaf has a different flavor, every vegetable has a different aroma. So, and then we also connect with them. Then the day we are taking methi bunch, we also tell them to bring methi paratha. Okay. So, we, why we have to do these? So that we also help them to see that these are healthy food items. They must eat it. So, when every child in the class is having a methi paratha, then they will love to eat methi in any form. Let's go to the next one. Now, um, again, another leaf. I was talking about the dry leaves. So, see how they are curled. They would have some spots here and there. And how children would create through their own imagination certain interesting things. Next one. Okay. So, let's look at these letters. So, using of uh, twigs and different kinds of leaves, uh, we could create. So, पेपर मत लो और बड़े बड़े सुंदर सुंदर चीजें मत बनाने की जरूरत है इसको लगा दो अपने बच्चे सीखेंगे दो दिन में खत्म हो गया ड्राई हो गया दे आल्सो अंडरस्टूड हाउ द ग्रोथ हैपन फ्रॉम ग्रीन इट टर्न्स लिटिल लाइट ब्राउन एंड देन डार्क ब्राउन एंड देन फाइनली डीके राइट सो दे विल लर्न टू पिक एंड इट्स सो ईजी न इट्स सो ईजी दे आर नॉट वॉन्टिंग टू स्टडी पेरेंट्स का मैम माई चाइल्ड डजेंट वॉन्ट टू स्टडी But they'll say, mommy, get me leaves. I will study. <laughs> okay, they will all learn. Okay, the next one. Numbers, letters, shapes with twigs. So all these children had done. So whatever they want to do when you're doing the standing girl lines, you do this. When you start with the sleeping lines, you do that. When you start with the slant line, they can do triangles. They can do anything. Right? And they'll be much faster at it than doing it in the notebook on paper and pencil. Once they do it, they will quickly jump onto it because they have developed the interest in doing it. Yeah, the next one. Okay, so let's move to the flowers. Something beautiful, like what I'm wearing today, nice and flowery. And I thought today's session, I must wear something uh, bright and cheerful. So the natural brushes, you know, that all our um, environment has so many natural brushes. You go and pull out. Bougainvillea hai. Uh, there are a bunch of flowers. I'll show you something like this that I have it on my table today. Hmm? Can you see? No, you can't see. Ah, uh, you can see now. Can you see? This is something that I've kept. This is an old jar. I lost the lid or the lid broke, but I didn't throw the jar. Right? Because I believe in sustainable behavior. So this is my nice, beautiful flower box. I'll show you the picture of this also. Okay, so the natural brushes, you and children love to it. They'll say, okay, I'm mopping, I'm cleaning my table, I'm dusting. They, they have so much of fun, I can't tell you. They can even use these brushes to paint, by the way. It comes out fantastic. I don't have children's sheets now with me. And the pictures were all on, up on Facebook and Instagram. So I don't have anything with me to pull out. It was too much of a task. Now counting and creating. You have these, these kind of flowers are so easily available. Every bush has this white flower. right? And uh, you can even do this very interesting. That windmill thing. Na? Jo se hum windmill chalate hai ka. So this, this flower actually is like a windmill. So you can help them. The very nice fine motor skill activity. You know, Help them to hold a flower and twist it in their uh, fingers. So um, they can count it, they can create a pattern, uh, they can do anything, whatever they wish to do. Okay, the next one. Now, uh, this is just a picture from our center, how we would take children out and never pluck, never pluck, never pluck. No? These are all something that were on, on the ground, which were picked up and shown to kids. And kids try and feel it, they look into it, 
they they sometimes look at the bugs they look at the um, bees and they look at the ants going up so the entire nature comes so alive uh, to them outdoors okay next one please ah this also just another one so can you see so at one point i want to highlight here is you know as an educator you must have the pride and an interest and love to do this if you don't have your children will see that both these teachers why i have picked up these two pictures specifically to share with you from their faces from their smiles from the picture uh, do you see the connect with children and with the uh, environment or you don't see the connect ye wo bas kara rahe hain bhai nature mein jana hai to le gaye but unko maza nahi hai they have okay next one please so we must be role models now one of the things that we need to remember when we using flowers and also many other natural resources bringing into the class now i was telling you no how do we can create i had actually created a video but it didn't get into it so it's okay now um, first of all never we have to tell the children the value of never pluck flowers use withered or fallen flowers you know your florist around or your gardener can bring you lot of flowers फ्लावर्स के साथ इतनी एक्टिविटीज हो सकती हैं वो आपको पूरा का पूरा टला देंगे जो पुराने हो जाते हैं ना फूल वो लोग फेंक देते हैं तो व्हाट आर यू डूइंग यूर डूइंग टू थिंग्स यूर डूइंग सर्विस टू द म्यूनिसिपैलिटी बाय ब्रिंगिंग दोज फ्लावर्स टू योर क्लासरूम एंड चिल्ड्रन कैन रिमूव द पेटल्स दे कैन काउंट द पेटल दे कैन put it in the uh, tub and those can floor they can look at the color they can smell they also do lot of crushing you know they can pound those leaves and see how much color is coming out and then we need to wash them and dust the flowers so that there are no insects etc now what do we do with the flowers you feel the texture smell the flowers count the flower the petals few many so some flower like this white one uh, you can count it but there are some flowers like a daisy or a dahlia we will have chrysanthemum which would have many 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 petals so it's very difficult to count the petals so we can do the concept of few and many various colors beautiful colors we have in there so you don't have to create color charts bring the different color of flowers and children will appreciate it whether the petals flow then what are the uses of flowers you know we said we can do a rangoli we can make a garland we can decorate it like i said we have put it in the, the water um, you can uh, float these on the in, in uh, you know uh, like उर्ली में आप डाल सकते हैं इन अ टब और समथिंग देन यू कैन टेक कलर फ्रॉम द फ्लावर्स नो एज आई सेड दैट व्हेन दे क्रश इट और दे पाउंड इट विद अ लिटिल स्टोन दे सी हाउ मच या यूज इट एज फॉर मेडिसिन बट दिस वी कांट टेल चिल्ड्रन डार्लिंग बिकॉज़ चिल्ड्रन विल स्टार्ट थिंकिंग दैट मम्मी मैम ने बोला फ्लावर्स आर आल्सो अ मेडिसिन सो वी हैव टू बी लिटिल केयरफुल then uh different colors from the flowers you know which they to pull out so what we do we give them an old draft sheet so they put a flower in between an old flower and they turn the paper so it's it's like um, i hope i'm making it clear so you take a paper and you put the flower inside you turn it and then children go press 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 they will press it with something they pound it and then then they let it be and after a while when they open it the entire uh, flower color is on the paper uh then printing we can again use the flowers to do the dabbing dabbing on the paper or uh, on any uh, pattern the next one emani okay so this is just a picture of the flowers i just showed you so you can uh, have some fresh flowers from your uh, something which is not so you have you can pluck it sometime like this is the madhumalti flower i have a long huge creeper of madhumalti and they don't last in two days they'll just the flowers will fall off so i just remove one put it for in the water and you can also tell children that you can remove the um you know pluck the flowers from this bunch this is a bunch of flowers there are some flowers single so this is a bunch and then you can remove it and then again put it in a bowl of water yeah next one please okay now let's come to the trees now observing feeling and connecting with the trees so we used to have a lot of our sessions uh, conducted uh, under the trees so what are these uh, um, uh, under the trees that we would do uh, the first picture is of the neem tree right 
So somebody just mentioned that uh, with the, on the, uh, we use these flowers on the, some trees are medicinal or herbal plants or trees. So we would talk about the neem tree. Children will feel the neem tree. They'll take the leaves. Uh, and uh, in different seasons, you can also see the flowers on the neem tree. Now, this was part of our campus. And I'm sure a lot of schools would have many, many trees in their campus, which we've never connected to. And um, so in different seasons, you can take the child, children to the same tree and observe. Sometimes there will be no leaves on to it during the fall. Uh, the leaf color changes when the new leaves come during spring. The color of the leaves is very different. It's very pale green. Uh, then the fruit come, the nibolis come on the uh, tree. Uh, similarly, we see the second one is the amaltas. You know, we uh, all people from up north, you know, amaltas is the tree which blooms when it is super hot. Right. So um, uh, we had a couple of amaltas trees in our complex. So children would stand on beneath it. And the amaltas also, you know, just like the flowers fall, they drop off the tree very, very quickly. Uh, the tree is in a bloom hardly for two weeks. And the whole ground is full, it becomes yellow, you know, and children, uh, sometimes they would, I remember, um, children talking to each other say, I don't want to step on to the flowers. Ma'am, can we remove the flowers? So then they would collect the flowers. So what I would do is uh, we don't give them. Either make a paper bag, give them newspaper, no plastic, or you can give them some cloth bags. You know, we, we had some cloth bags like this. Uh, all the old sheets, we've made them into the cloth bags. So they would come, pick it up, collect it, and then do whatever activity they want to do, put it in water and see that their flower would last for some more time. And the last one is, you know, children hugging the trees, they're feeling the bark of the tree, uh, how rough it is. So there is so much that we can do simply by, you can even do some stories and then also talk about the trees are a house to birds, animals. So there will be nests in the trees and children will be looking out for, ma'am, I found one, ma'am, there is that bird perched onto that branch. So look at the vocabulary that we are doing. Right? So every aspect, you can count the trees in your compound, in your complex. So whatever, depending on the stage of your child, three-year-old, maybe count up to 10, then 15, and likewise, so you can say, okay, I have 10 trees. If I remove two, if I cut those trees, how many am? So you can do the subtraction, the additions, and all that stuff. Okay, the next one. Very important, when we are outdoors, children must experience walking on the grass. How many of you have actually experienced walking on the grass? Liked it, not liked it? Let's take a few seconds of break. Oh, okay, one. Loved it, thank you. Wow, 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 wow. We need more of... And if you haven't, please do it tomorrow morning, okay? Let's walk on the grass and uh, let's see how it feels. Uh, it is very, very therapeutic. You can start your day walking on the grass, wet grass. They will feel that, oh, but it didn't rain, but how come the grass is still wet? It's dew on the grass, right? Let them feel the grass. So walking on the grass is a great sensorial experience and it is very, very therapeutic, very healthy. So let's encourage children to take off their shoes, the stock. Uh, half the children will say, ma'am, ganda ho ra, you know, and the parent will also maybe come and com put a complaint in the diary. Ma'am, aaj na uske socks mein baut sara ghaas tha, ma'am. Aaj aapne kya kara do, the ask it one thing. So, bachcho ko, parents ko samjhana bahut zirni hai. But bachcho ko, please experience lene do, even if their feet get dirty. And the grass just usually can be... Uh, Thank you. Nice experience. Wonderful feeling. Yes, thank you. I also feel the same. Next one. Okay. We can also make a policy. Like in our center, we had a policy. That every birthday of the child, the child has to bring a plant to the center. Now, you don't have to bring it in fancy um, uh, vases or something or the pots. Uh, it could be a simple pot. It could just be in a uh, soil. Or it could be an earthen pot. They could even bring a small sapling and they could plant depending on the space in your school. So imagine if you have 30 kids in your class, 40 kids in your class, once a year you will have a plant coming in. And the child will 
connect with that and experience that as you are growing, you know that Amalthas tree that you just saw in the previous slide was actually the tree uh, planted by one of our uh, children and uh, it was his birthday. I still remember Saksham and I sent the pictures to his parents. Uh, he must be now, I think, 18, 19 years or so. And uh, uh, he still connects with that tree. Right? We all remember, so make this as a policy. Even if it's not a school policy, you can surely create a class policy. Right? Bring a plant, let's do this plantation. So why do we have to have plantation once in a year? We can have a plantation on a regular basis. Right? And let your class be decorated with some nice plants on every birthday. Okay, next one, please. Mother Earth, soil. Uh, I was uh, listening to one organic farmer. He's a good friend. I invited him to my Rotary Club. And you know what he said? He said, our health is dependent on the health of the soil. Okay? We, um, Sadhguru Ji ne bhi shuru kiya, save the soil. So very important. Right? So, hum to soil ko chute nahi hai. Hum to feel nahi karte. So, we must and must give children the experience of Feeling the soil, holding the soil, connecting with the soil, doing some sewing exercise and seeing how many have come up. Right? Even if they're not doing any sewing, but mitti ke saath to connection bana do. Jiska connection mitti ke saath ne bana, usme energy ne hoga. Ye me 100% bata sakti hu from my own personal experience. And all our children are healthy, wealthy and prosperous wherever they are today. Okay, next one. Ma'am, uh, I think, Jemmy, ma'am, do you have a question? You can unmute if you have a question. She's raised her hand from a while. Jemmy, ma'am, do you have a question? You can unmute yourself. All right, I think that's my mistake. Okay. Yeah, so now what else can we do with on the mother? We can do tracing. Uh, if the soil is very dry, give them a glass of water steel glasses, some mugs, we all have in the schools. No? So let them carry little, little water and sprinkle it onto it. Feel how it, the what is the aroma of the wet soil. We all love it no? when it rains. So let them create that experience for themselves. Then when the soil is wet, they can do it. When the soil is too dry, it's very sandy. Right? Every part of the country would have different color of the soil. It's not just the same. I mean, it's brown, black, reddish soil. So whichever is the color use that color. Soil doesn't have to be essentially brown. So uh, you can take a twig, children can do the pattern, write, draw, anything on the soil. And they love making balls, you know. Uh, you can create seed balls and tell them I'm so play, keeping the seed and when it rains, we are going to sow the seeds, right? So, um, uh, and they can, uh, many of them would do, I'm making my pastry, someone will say I'm doing my cookie, and all that thing stuff will come out. They'll be very creative when they start playing with soil. Okay. Next. Yeah, walking on soil. You know, we must and must. As I said, walk on the grass. Even if it's just the bare soil, hum log kheti bari nahi kar rahe. But inko mitti pao mein lagna baad zaruri hai. Great energy. Let me tell you. Sun se zyada energy art mein hai. But we don't know about that. Let's do the next one. Hmm. Nurture nature. Now let's bring some into the classroom. So when we bring into the classroom, are these pots that come on the birthdays. So each child is watering their plants. Now some plants, we also allow them. You know, you can put some sheets and uh, get some plants, let them to remove from one uh, pot to another or plant there. Somebody has got a sapling. Let's plant it in one of the planter. So a lot of these can happen even in the classroom. Yes, it's going to be messy. So please bear with the mess. If you can't bear with the mess, you can't be a nature-loving person. Nature-loving means mess. Next. Okay. Uh, now, these are some of the pictures. Uh, lotus pond, uh, lotus pods are uh, rarely available, uh, but they are available. And I'm sure many of you can, uh, if you want now that you will go around, now you will see kisi ped mein kuch laga hai. I still remember when I was a child, that this particular tree, just pe na, uh, wooden flowers, just se ban jate. you know, it was like a bulb. 
and uh, after the flower had fallen off those uh, wooden uh, uh, flowers would remain and uh, we and they will fall off also but we would ask somebody to remove it for us we would come home at tab to summer camp nahi hote the but we would create our own summer camp and we would paint it golden yellow blue the house used to be full of that and they would last for years Right, so you can bring any of such kind of a thing. You can even use a coconut shell for that. Uh, 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 the uh, ripe one or the raw one, and uh, you can fill it with it. You can add some create sapling into it. Now this is a pine motor scale. It's not fancy tongs. लाने का जरूरत नहीं है. सबके घर पे tongs होते हैं. नहीं भी करा तो हाथ से कर लो. No. And now these are some firang photos. Uh, couple of them. तो डोंट वरी कि मुझे तो वो टॉक्स दिखाया था मैम ने आई हैव टू गेट दोस तो नो डोंट वरी इवन इफ आई हैव सम मटर के दाने है ना मटर के दाने लोगे और उसको डाल देना किसी चीज में सेम एक्टिविटी हो जाएगी तो स्टैंपिंग ऑन द लीव दो नॉट ड्राई लीव आई टोल शोड यू यू कैन क्रिएट पैटर्न यू कैन इवन स्टैंप इट कम्स आउट ब्यूटीफुल स्टैंपिंग ऑन द लीव राइट तो यू कैन हैव दोस इवन वो जो आपके लूडो के टाइप का आते हैं ना यू कैन यूज दोस आल्सो टू स्टैंप दैट यू कैन यूज एनीथिंग टू स्टैंप दिस इज जस्ट वन एग्जांपल the next one okay now this is also again using the different natural resources you can do number work you can do letter work yeah again letters and words you know like um, if you have a carpenter koi purana aapka branch nikal gaya na all you need to do is just chop it into the circle so this is what we did humne usko chop karke chota chota and uske upar humne paint se one time permanent marker se likh lo ab wo aapke paas hamesha ke liye resource hai okay and you now place this and if the children are a little older like they moving to class 1 or so and they've started to um uh, write then you can give them a word again the word is written on a leaf okay which is on their mat and what is the mat mat is nothing but bori तो आपने बोरी लिया ना बोरी को कटना है और उसके ऊपर आपने उसको वर्ड दे दिया और लेटर्स निकालने हैं उसने अपना वर्ड बना उसको लिखा ही शी मैन टॉय नो दिस इज अ गेम फॉर देम ऑल द टाइम वी आर टेलिंग अवर चिल्ड्रन राइट 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 दे गेट सो बोर्ड ऑफ स्टार्टिंग एंड दे वॉन्ट टू स्टार्ट सो लेट्स क्रिएट सम फन विद दिस ओके द नेक्स्ट वन या यू कैन डू एनी एक्टिविटी नाउ लुक एट दैट एंटीनर्स आर कमिंग अप <laughs> okay now this is the pebble activity this i did with my grandson of course we used to do it in the school but this particular one that you are saying learning with pebbles and rocks um, now rocks is hum log rock ko bolte hain jo pahadon pe hota hai but globally bade stone ko they call it rocks right so now if you have a collection of these pebble these days you get it a lot from these marble shops also so you can keep a bag full of small pebbles and nice pebbles washed pebbles in your classroom children love it they can write their name they can write letter they can create any pattern uh, numbers you think of it and just leave them with some they, you can even create game and how many of you know of this fine motor skill eye hand coordination game that we used to play with pebbles and um, marble okay. so some of the things need to return You don't have to all the time looking out for buying things. जो है उससे करो and उससे जो feel आएगा ना वो किसी से नहीं आएगा. I can tell you. Parents keep saying I bought such an expensive game for my kid. एक दिन में तोड़ के खराब कर दिया. फिर क्यों खरीदा? हाँ आपके पास तो है ना जाओ garden में ढूंढो थोड़ा चीजें लेके आओ and this will remain forever and you will not mind if you have lost it. Next one. Okay, now when we are talking of the pebbles and the rocks, so, so these are the rocks meaning the big stones. Huh? So if it is possible uh, in your school, if it is not already there, it's not a very expensive deal, right? हम सब जगह sand pit, sand pit बनाते हैं और उसको बड़ा manage करना मुश्किल होता है. All you do is a little outdoor space, create a little place with your big stones or the rocks that we call, allow children to walk on this. Especially once it gets rainy, it looks so beautiful. and let children walk on to it let them feel how they have to balance their body to walk on this little adventurous activity and then they can feel the stone they look at the shape they look at the color they are heavy they're not light uh, let's not pick them in our hand so there is so much that goes around this can be a good paper weight 
uh, all the unconventional uses of and then sometimes you can take the paint and water colors and put the paint onto the same rocks they can paint it and then take it back you know and next rain all the paint will be washed off so these kind of things you can do okay next one okay now these are the feathers now um what is it that we can do with the feathers, right? So uh, there is a feeling, uh, feel the feather. You know, everybody just loves to feel the feathers. You know, I have these small two little feathers, but you can collect, don't buy feathers. Please, market the jacket, artificial feathers, fresh feathers, huh? they look so good. You know, children will play with it, they'll feel the feather. Just make sure that you watch it for them because uh, they could be containing some virus and all that. So that, that one is a, uh, Pigeon feather. So tell them where do the feathers come from? You can have the whole entire conversation around the feather. How is the feather? The weight of the feather. How do you feel it? And uh, then painting. Feather painting is amazing. Children will love it. Painting with the feather. On the other side of this uh, feather, this is the peacock feather. And th with this stick, you can also do a bit of whatever you can. You know? So each feather would have uh, a little hard edge. Oh, do you remember earlier days they would do calligraphy uh, with the feather or they would write with feather. Uh, <laughs> we'll ask them to write with peacock feather. <laughs> yeah, sure. So they could even stick these feathers and create their own patterns and do whatever. Okay. Next one, please. I'm just giving you very illustrative thing. You know, I'm not giving you absolute comprehensive the whole idea is to set you thinking. Now, enjoy and love rain. You know, I just got a, a Facebook uh, note from the girl on the left. Um, this is from our center. Uh, and, the, you know, she wrote to me that, ma'am, uh, every teacher taught me how does rain fall, clouds form, um, what is rain, acid rain. No one actually taught me how to enjoy rain and how to love rain. And today, I don't repent, regret when it is raining and I say, oh, there's going to be a puddle or there'll be traffic jam. But I just know that I have to enjoy and love rain. Right? So let's give our children little experiences. But you must make sure that one bar to wo wet ho jai rain. Wo jo maza hai, jo anand hai na, uh, mein ka, aur gana, gaane ka, wo ek alag hi. It's not just being filmy, but it is actually something. That's why we love it now when we watch such scenes, but we do, ourselves don't want to wet ourselves. Huh? So let's do that. And let's see, okay, what do we use as a protection is an umbrella. So there's again a lot of conversation around rain. Okay, next one, please. Next one, Imani. Yeah. Now let's move to the resources from the pen. Uh, and very quickly run through these. Now, this is uh, we are using the wheat flour. You can use the rice flour, and um, uh, we could do tracing. Now, this is some a very common activity. I'm sure many of you would be already doing it. The next one, yeah. Now, children like to grip it. You know, the whole press and see the impressions on the. Uh, plate which has art on it. They can see their finger impressions onto it. Uh, they make some hills. Like they do a sand plate, they can also do it with art. The reason we want to give them art is this is part of their life. Right? This is real. And this is real learning. This is So it's experiential using the real things. And even if they pulled in their mouth, kuch farak padega, it's safe. Right? <clears throat> Next one. Yeah. So uh, you can give them a lot of dough. We don't need to buy Play-Doh. I'm dead against buying Play-Dohs. Add any color, uh, edible color to your dough and it becomes a colored dough. So look at this, how kids love to roll their dough, make their shapes and, uh, you know, so this uh, kid doing some eyes and nose and face and smiley and he's using the kitchen tools. So sitting in the kitchen, uh, in the dining hall and wanted all the kitchen tools to be around. You can use a fork, easily available. You can do old bottle cap and uh, let them go press, press, press on the dough and they make shape of a circle. Next one. So all these stamping exercises, you can use any, any item that's available to you to stamp and create impressions.
Next one, please. Mom, I've changed. Sorry? Mom, I have changed. Is it not visible? Next one, next one. Yeah, yeah. These are just the similar ones. Huh? Okay, so let's use, uh, we all eat rice, right? So if we can have a small container of rice, you know, children understand. And they're transferring. Now, there's a concept of measurement. There's a concept of how much and the concept of weight. There's a con the fine motor skill of moving from one container to another. And this is again a life skill, right? I've seen so many people, when they remove it, they drop so much of rice or atta outside the container. Why? Because bachpan mein nahi kiya kar, right? So when they do it in the bachpan, and isn't it a measurement, you give them different kinds of... Uh, Contain maybe a small glass, big glass, a small bowl, and they know how many, uh, how much rice is coming into it. You know, two uh, uh, contain, um, glasses full or three cups full. So they get the sense of the. So there are a lot of mathematical skills around. It. The next one, please. Holding, feeling, measuring. We also measure it in the Indian thing with the hands. Make what be other ki I make dal, I make it mutti se. Panch mutti dalna, char mutti dalna, teen mutti dalna, right? So holding, feeling, and that whole feel of holding the grains is very good. Connect with something that you eat. We only see the cooked things in front of us, but we don't go back to the source. And then we say thank you. We use rice. In our Indian tradition, we use rice. Okay, atta, you can also do one more thing. Dry atta, tell children to go feed the ants. Bahar laga do. Okay, so this next one. Similarly, we can do uh, feed the birds also. You know, you can ask for some bajra or whatever is a left food in the tiffin. Uh, tell the child to go out and place it in one corner, which is a bird or insect food corner. Tracing on the uh, very easy, put it in a plate, give them a plate, and then them do tracing of all their alphabets that they need. Next one. Difference between the raw and the cooked rice. So much of difference. It's dry, that's bad, this is sticky, this is not sticky. Um, and uh, this is hard, that's soft. So how many concepts we can do with this as well? Okay, next one. Sorting. So we have pulses. I'm telling you, so many girls, boys, both do not know the names of the pulse. Rajma Chana, We made sure that all our children learn the names of the dal pulse. Whatever they are eat, reading, I mean eating, they must know about that. I can't have a friend and not the, know the name of the friend. So uh, you can mix up two, three grains, the bigger one, let them do the sorting. So this is just two. Uh, the next one, and you can talk about the name of the grain, let them feel it, big, small. Then uh, here we have mixed the three kinds, the black chana, the white chana, and the rajma. The next one. We can also give them a number value, count and trust, you know, okay, we have done 10. So you remove 10 grains and put them into the uh, next other bowl. And now we say, okay, I'm going to remove two out of this. So we can do addition and subtraction, <clears throat> number values. <clears throat> All of that can happen here. Yeah. Somebody has raised hand. Uh, yeah. Do if you, you like have a question, uh, yeah, ma'am, you can unmute. I'm unable to actually pronounce your name. Yeah. The Sadmaga Panhekar. Panhekar, Miss Panhekar. Pan can you unmute yourself? <clears throat> okay. Anyway, it was maybe, maybe my mistake. Yeah, so this is the pattern. You can also create patterns uh, with the pulses. The next one. And you can again do the um, yeah, washing, soaking, uh, germinating. All these exercises can also be done. Now, we also used, used to lose a lot of corn. We would use it and bring it to the class. Now, there is a sweet corn or a corn in the cob. Then there is also this, uh, the small corn. What is it called? The baby corn. And children love to remove the, you know, kernels from the corn cob. They remove, remove, want to remove the shell. 
you can talk about CC's form. There are colors on the way. They can count the kernels. Uh, they can count the uh, corn and they can count the lead, you know, that they removed uh, to remove the cob from the corn. Yeah. The next, and then there is a parts of the corn. So this is the activity that all children just loved it. So learning by doing. Next one. Now, um, we can use the seasonal fruits. Now, what we do, we make the big, big, heavy, heavy charts and say, oh, for, say, is orange, 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 is orange, but orange is not always orange. Orange is also green. Hmm? So, uh, let's bring the things right into the classroom. Let them feel it. Life skill, fine motor skill. Uh, like then take out the fragment, count it, deseed it, take out the seeds. You can cut it into two halves. Let them see how it looks from inside when it is cut, when you squeeze it like a lemon and count the seeds and feel the seeds. How many? Can you count the seeds? Is it few? Is it many? Can you count? How many are there? And then there's another very interesting essence. You know, when you take out the peel of the orange and you squeeze it, you can even dry the orange peel. It has medicinal value. And of course, the language of bed, the big, the small, outside, inside, shiny, colors, shape, all those concepts. I'm not repeating because we've done it already. So you can use all those concepts for this learning. So the next one. And children love to eat because when you bring anything to the classroom, remember, they will learn to eat. And it must always be followed by eating. They can all bring one orange in their tiffin. They can all bring one apple in their tiffin. Now, we all go say red, red apple, juicy, juicy apple. Who says apple is only red? I say apple is green also. There is a green apple in the market. So let's also teach them the real thing. And uh, the alphabet, feel the apple, how it looks from outside, what it did from inside, the seeds of the apple. I have only one apple, but I have... 15 children, how do we feed them? So the sharing, caring, dividing, inclusion, so much can go on with just one app. Yeah, next one. The same, they can count the seeds, they can feel the seeds, see the seeds, and they can all enjoy the apple. You can make as many slices as the number of children. One apple, everybody eats. Papaya. Most of the children don't like to eat papaya, but papaya is a very, very, very healthy, right? So let's show them the raw papaya, the ripe papaya, and let's slice it. And it's full of seeds. Children love this activity. We used to make children do it, they will de-seed it. So you remove it and then they'll start counting. We give them the bowls or the small plates and then they will start putting it. They feel the seeds and they'll say, okay, ma'am, I'm going out to sow these seeds also. We will have lot many papaya trees in our garden now. So please do these kind of activities. Instead of just painting and coloring, do something more realistic. Yeah. Next one. Same papaya seeds. You can do counting. Sound boxes. We don't need to buy any sound boxes. They get the containers, small, big, any, and, uh, you know, the shakers. You can add different kinds. You can have salt into it. You can have the chana, the rajma. You can have the thin uh, pulses into it. You can have atta into it and let them feel. If you put atta, would it make sound? No. If you have chana, it makes maximum sound. If you have salt, again, it doesn't sound. So what is the learning? Right? So they are experimenting. And they are concluding. Next one. Okay. Uh, pumpkin is another interesting food. I've seen all schools celebrating Halloween. Bring the pumpkin. Uh, place some candles into it. And enjoy the black dressing and all that stuff. But let's talk about pumpkin. Again, a success tasta and sabse healthy. A lot of our children are deficient in vitamin A. Papaya. Pumpkin, both with P, let's get them to the classroom, cut it, show them, create something with the pumpkin, make the children eat with it, right? And there are many seeds. We all go to buy the expensive pumpkin seeds. You know, the fad of eating the seeds, it's very healthy. But pumpkin ain't hanging hum. So let's get, see, all these things, if we start from early childhood, children will all know that that seed that I'm eating and mommy is eating is actually coming from this market. 
and it looks like this is very soft and i can eat it with my vegetable right so they will go home and say mom buy pumpkin and we'll make vegetables parents used to come mother say ma'am what have you done my child wants to eat pumpkin no one eats pumpkin in my house so it doesn't matter you cook for your child so then next day they would send it for the teacher also now another very interesting activity shelling the peas let children do it's a great fine motor skill activity and you know what the physiotherapists and the doctors the neurosurgeon tell their patients ki aap anar chilo aur aap matar chilo because of your nerve endings and this has effect on your brain okay to humko ye simple cheeze karni hai aur simple cheezon ka impact bahut bada hai and now i want you to write down what all learning will you have when you do the peas activity just peas get about half a kg peas more than enough you may have to just the school has to spend maybe 10 rupees 20 rupees 40 rupees maximum isse zyada to nahi mandi se le aao acche se wash karo give it to your children they will love it the color inside outside the same color the shape of the peas the taste of the peas they can eat raw they can right. eat it cooked right count the peas size of the peas soft hai anything right okay next one now onion okay i am going getting you the simplest thing i am not gone into the fancy stuff so all of you would have got onion and done the duck 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 paper pe painting a huh? onion painting nimbu painting uh, bhindi painting very common all of you would have done it right i'm not talking of the painting you do it continue with that activity right spoil the onions throw them into the bin but but we did was something totally different first we do all this and then we say now use this only to paint so you're not spoiling the entire onion one onion enough for the entire class so let them you slice them you take out the rings let them make patterns uh you can ask them if you cut onion like this it looks like c it looks like a crescent moon what is the color of the how how are the flakes outside how does it feel inside outside juicy not juicy pungent smell taste everything they can okay so this is the they playing with onions next order of course lady finger now what have i have chosen only some of these is because these are easily managed by children okay uh, so if you want to cut slice it fine otherwise children can do it with their hand they can break it they can cut it move into two three pieces just you know uh, breaking the again inside outside seeds smelling uh, surface of the lady finger is a little drop so all those concepts again you can count the lady finger and then if you still want to go ahead with printing please go ahead with printing i'm not against it but i'm little against wasting resources so we can do printing with the twig and with the leaf rather than with a vegetable yeah next one okay so we come to the close of my presentation so what is it that we uh to all this to our environment when we learn to the natural resources when we learn is we are helping children so i'm just put everything at the end and then i'll end it with one small little exercise observe and explore so the more we observe the more we'll explore we have to be aware we are not aware of what's happening around us so when children are taken through to these processes of learning they become very aware citizens they learn to connect with whatever they are working with because resources is something that you touch you feel you see you hear so all our senses are active so let them connect let them connect it beautifully now that is where the educator as a facilitator role is to connect this is how i connect love and respect okay i've used this uh, i've played the game i've done all the stringing tying everything now what do i do with this leaf the leaf must be returned back to its from where it has come so we'll put it in the garden it will dry and it will become soil so if we can tell the children the interrelatedness of life right it goes where it has come from appreciate and be grateful i'm very thank you to this leaf 
it allowed me to play a game it allowed me to learn it allowed me to feel i am sending it back to the mother earth reflect so when we do some activity one day we've done fan we've done ball we've done deep now next day we just close your eyes and reflect what did we do how did you feel what kind of foil leaf did you see what did you see on that wall when we were coming inside the gate what did you see so reflection is very important what did you like what did you don't didn't not like because that is what is going to give you feedback to plan that and I, I, this is i'm giving you with a guarantee card if you go with this learning from environment and with the natural resources not a child will come and say that the child didn't enjoy the session and final is act and experiment you have to let children experiment and take action now a very simple exercise for all of you okay sit straight i'm not wanting you to get up okay so how do we do this exercise so we make the children to stand every day and raise their head okay so we look, look up we go outside we look up what do we see we see the sky what the color of the sky blue gray white cloud not cloud okay come back if i'm in the classroom i look up Oh, what do I look up? Oh, that's the ceiling. Oh, ceiling has a fan. Somebody say, oh, there's a spider going on the ceiling, ma'am. Very good. There's a lizard on the the ceiling, ma'am. It's dirty. There's a cobweb. Very good. You observe something. Now we go down. It's a neck exercise. So we go down. If you're outside, you're outdoors. Look down. What do you see? Connect with the mother earth. Soil. So what do you see? The ground. The soil. the grass maybe the paved the tiles okay now i go straight i look straight what do i see straight inside the classroom outside the classroom what do i see i look right what do i see on to my right what do i turn left what do i see on my left maybe a friend maybe a table maybe a tree maybe a butterfly so let's just do this very simple exercise neck exercise go up go down go straight look to the side right and to the left and we are done for the day thank you very much thank you so much ma'am thank you so much that was i think i have my chat box full of comments saying a wonderful presentation and a wonderful session by you and all the teachers had a great take away lovely thank session you. wonderful nice exercise thank you for sharing this thank you the session is very useful learned a lot of activities thank you so much ma'am the chat box i can't i can't keep a track of the chat box is running so fast and indeed i thank think justify learning with nature so effectively that everybody is now taking home the concept that learning with nature can have can can happen easily and effectively and it can actually make an everyday classroom an interesting place for learning right thank you thank you so much ma'am i'll stay on for a little while longer and uh, I, you can leave if you want to any teacher who wants to leave can leave thank you so much teachers have a good evening any questions any, any questions or you want to share your experience it's it's not a q and a it's also sharing right you have experienced something in your own uh, places of work at home with your own children uh, in your family or outside in the school please do that sharing we'll be happy to i also want to learn and go back na it can't be a one you would like to add something share some of the experiences you've done it with i'm sure with some some in some houses with some grandchildren in some houses uh, with some children you know Okay, so they are all in awe. Oh my God! All in awe. <laughs> <laughs> all in awe. Okay, I was also always in awe. When we <laughs> feel, we are. We have three hours left. Have we finished class? Me, school? Me, have we finished? Children just come and they are going, and they don't want to go because there is just so much of fun happening, right? So how do you? Can we have that? somebody raise their hand? Yeah, ma'am. You want to say something? You can unmute. And can you talk? A wonderful okay. session. A wonderful session. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I'm myself a nature lover, and I specialize in geography. And I just wanted to share, you know, when we are talking about our natural resources, 
this is the way I want children to connect as you have enlightened. Yeah, because, uh, you know, children hardly play in mud, right? We have grown up playing with sand, mud. We know the feel of mud. We know the feel of gravel, stones. You know, even I remember my childhood memories. This time when we went to Goa, I made my children, you know, watch shells, seashells, how the beaches, the sand, and uh, making uh, sand castles in wow. our own way, right? And uh, another thing, like when I teach soil, right? I always tell them, feel it, like hold it. Uh, ko haath mein pakdo, aur karo, reet kaisa lagta hai. Right? You know, like it, it's, it's very necessary for us to be bilingual as many of them may have hesitation in communicating. And the moment you reach out to them in their language, you, sh you should see the eyes lit up like a thousand watt bulb. Really, ma'am, I mean, a very, very interesting session. And I'm a core geographer. So, you know, I was listening to, I was really caught on with your natural resources, <laughs> right? So making a bookmark to uh, all the suggestions that you even uh, shelling the corn, like, you know, uh, is another. And I'm sure like all science teachers have done this uh, beanstalk, uh, telling them the story, right? So I think, yeah, uh, this is really needed because for the last two years, children have hardly stepped out of their homes, you right. know? because of the pandemic. So I feel it, it was a real required session. I hope you uh, make more children join. Uh, probably you can allow children to join your session. Thank you so much, Ayam. We take that as a feedback and a suggestion. Maybe we could plan something like this for the children also. What classes, yeah. ma'am, do you suggest we should take up this for? Uh, Ma'am, if you ask me, actually, see, even mathematics these days is being taught like, you know, um, uh, using uh, uh, nature, right? I mean, fruits or uh, leaves or uh, uh, like instead of thumbprints, now you have leaf printing, right? Mm -hmm. And um, connecting with this, so colors can be taught. I mean, it can be from KG to uh, any mm -hmm. level, but definitely, definitely a session from class six and above. That's where like you'll you'll really get to see the enthusiasm. Perfect. You Point must six, conduct yeah. it. I mean, I I really uh, enjoyed because I felt when I could enjoy so much. So <laughs> I think uh, the limit is endless for children. They would actually, you know, sit back. Even I am tempted to do all these activities which ma'am has suggested, though I have uh, personally experienced them and I also uh, include these things. But I felt that, you know, like, Every time you meet her, you learn something and you feel life is so simple. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Thank you for adding colors to our session. Thank you, Jam. Thank you so much. Grab it only to uh, make it real rather than put it in words, you know, because what we're talking about. So, kuch dekhne ko bhi ho na, sab senses involved. Hona I think when I, I was bringing these leaves in, I just thought that, okay, uh, my, when my children could create, why can't I create something? Huh? Ma'am, I teach rocks like this only. I pick up stones, you know, pebbles, sedimentary rocks, ki layers, kyun hai, wo strata, stratified rocks. Kyun kehte unko. I show them, see the colors, see the layers, how the sand is. Like, this is a very coarse uh, sand. Why is this is called? Like, you know, I have collected samples of uh, soil from different places where I go. And yeah. I have I've include I've, I've really motivated the children also to do the same. So they bring back and they say, ma'am, why is this color red? I said, you answer. Oh. So they tell me that this is iron diffusion is high. So therefore this is red, right? Mm -hmm. So that, uh, uh, like we say, thought leads to thinking. That's mm -hmm. what I, I think you have infected our minds today. <laughs> Good. I, I like that word, Jaya. So let's remain infected with this uh, nature virus. And yes, uh, and let us spread. And it's it's a very apt topic because 5th June is World Environment Day. World so Environment. Uh, yeah, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for this. I, I wish I could share this with my children if you are posting it. So, you know, probably we can, uh, if you allow, then we can also uh, share this for children to watch. Perfect, ma'am. I'll take that into consideration. We'll definitely post it and we'll let you know when once we. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. So, no, ma'am. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Himani, ma'am. Uh, Nina, ma'am, I have a request. As ma'am said, 5th June is approaching. So, our school is uh, 
wants to that you will be the key speaker if possible for you while the link <laughs> so from that you can so <laughs> where is your school <laughs> and that ma'am we are connecting with students via zoom link okay and... okay so are you interested sure any time thank for you so children. much ma'am thank you so much yeah. uh, i will take your number from matthew sir ma'am and one more yes ma'am these sessions are very very interesting that i can i am a chemistry teacher as you said as a soil we can have a look on children that that different colors of soil different types of soil so what i can do i can ask the students to bring a soil from their home and then i can test a ph level wow. <laughs> yeah. absolutely yeah. anything sonam will connect you with dina ma'am and you can take it up from there thank you so much thank you sonam ma'am thank you for the wonderful session although i was late in your session but still wo jitna bhi maine dekha bahut hi bahut bahut badhiya tha ma'am thank you thank you so much uh, zayomi 2201 you just <laughs> yes ma'am yes ma'am ji ma'am bataiye kinna jadi kanda kinna mera tha adu questions kekran answer pandrana sonna sonna i think it galat se ho gaya उन्होंने गलती से हैंड रेज किया है रेनू मैम आई थिंक आप कह रहे थे यू वांट टू से समथिंग कुड यू रेनू मैम रेनू निगम मैम इफ यू वांट टू ऐड समथिंग कुड यू प्लीज रेज योर हैंड सो यू विल कम ऑन द ऑन माय लिस्ट आप और आई विल यस रेनू मैम यू कैन अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ यस यस गुड इवनिंग मैन मुझे भी आज का सेशन बहुत अच्छा लगा और इसी उसमें मैं भी एक अपना शेयर करना चाहती हूं जो मैंने मेरे स्कूल में एक एक्टिविटी कराई थी आई होप सो कि आपको भी अच्छी लगेगी आ, मैंने बच्चों को कुछ वेस्ट मटेरियल के साथ उनको मैन्योर बनाना बताया था जो हमारे हाउस में आ, हमारे किचन वेस्ट निकलते हैं लाइक फ्रूट्स के जो पील्स होते हैं वेजिटेबल पील्स एग शेल्स वगैरह को स्कूल में ले जा करके हमने उन्हें एक्टिविटी में करके दिखाया था कि अगर हम इनको एक बाउल में इकट्ठा करते जाते हैं और कुछ दिनों बाद ये वापस हमें मैन्योर के रूप में मिल जाते हैं जिन्हें हम जो है अपने पौधों में डाल सकते हैं और इसके लिए हमें मार्केट जाने की भी जरूरत नहीं है और ये मैन्योर भी काफी अच्छा होता है हमारे पौधों के लिए तो ये एक्टिविटी हमने अपने स्कूल में कराई थी रेनू इट्स अ वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट एक्टिविटी बिकॉज ये बहुत सिंपल सी चीज है लेकिन तो आज बीस साल हो गए लोग समझाते समझाते लिए किसी को समझ में नहीं आता है की आपको अपना गार्बेज को दो में तो डाल दो एक लेफ्ट और एक राइट वो मैं तभी बोला ना एक राइट भी देखो और लेफ्ट भी देखो ऊपर भी देखो और नीचे भी देखो हाँ मैम ये एक ऐसी चीज है जिसको हम हमेशा फेंक देते हैं सिर्फ बेस समझते हैं लेकिन ये बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट है हमारे लिए और हमारे सराउंडिंग के लिए भी की हम अपने आस भी सफाई भी हो जाती है और साथ ही हमें एक बहुत ही अच्छा मैन्यूर मिल जाता है तो ये एक्टिविटी मैंने कराई थी इसीलिए मैंने आज आपके साथ शेयर की थैंक यू Nice. thank you so much tenu ma'am that's so nice uh, for you to share the activity with us and i'm so happy that you shared ma'am one of our teachers abhi uh, she shared an activity thank that you. she did with sprouts thank you so much ma'am she did some uh, an activity with sprouts and uh, i'm just trying to find your name abilipsa ma'am abilipsa ma'am she did an activity with how she asked the children to bring vegetable sprouts and they were so happy and there was a charm in her eye, in their eyes she says when they saw the little tiny shoot coming out of her seed yeah. so mm-hmm. small things that make a lot of difference and it makes you a teacher with a difference yeah. all right thank you so much i think we had a lot of sharing thank you thank you so much teachers we've shared the feedback form on the chat box we'll share it on monday on the uh, group that we have created on whatsapp please 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 allow us saturday sunday happens to be an hour for us also so we'll get back on monday with any queries or any doubts that you have we'll take them up on monday and please allow some time so that you can get your certificates it takes some time teachers it's it though it is automatic but i had 450 teachers filling in their feedback forms today 450. So you can imagine even the system takes time. System को भी time दीजिए और अगर आपने अपना email ID गलत भरा होगा तो कहा जाएगा certificate? Please ये चीज ध्यान दीजिए certificate automatically आपकी email पर जाएगा अगर आपने email में एक spelling या एक dot भी गलत डाला होगा तो वो नहीं जाएगा है ना तो ये एक challenge हो जाता है जो आप कई बार हम लोग 
गलती से टाइप कर जाते हैं कई बार ऑटो सेव कुछ गलत होता है तो इट्स ओके एंड डोंट डोंट पैनिक आपको हर बार आई गिव यू योर सर्टिफिकेट्स बट जस्ट अलाउ अस टाइम डोंट फिल द ग्रुप विद से नॉट रिसीव नॉट रिसीव नॉट रिसीव इट इट हर्ट्स अस आल्सो राइट यू हैड अ वेरी गुड सेशन एंजॉय योर वीकेंड एंड एनी क्वेश्चंस और क्वेरीज वी विल सी यू ऑन मंडे थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू नीना मैम थैंक यू बाय बाय and nice. please remember now this has to become hamare ko videos banane hain youtube pe dalne hain of all the interesting activities that you are doing so that we outgrow the number of videos that people from other countries are and we are kind of watching those with such a lot of all let people across the world see what indian educators can and are doing okay thank you thank you so much thank bye. you If anybody is not joined the WhatsApp group, is not a part of it. I'm sharing my number on the chat box. You can drop me a message on Monday. I will add you to the group. Just drop me a message on Monday. I'll add you to the group. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Nina, ma'am. Thank you so much. A wonderful session. Thank you, everybody. Session. Have a great weekend. Bye, bye. Bye, ma'am.